this particular criteria namely 280 weightages out of uh, 1000 and that there are three important components there one is teaching with methodology 45 weightage teachers quality 45 weightage 50 weightage and evaluation process in terms 45 weightage so these are the three important components which constitutes almost 150 weightages so please understand if you have good data about this you are almost assured of a good grade so now coming to the examination reforms uh, what are the reforms that you can expect you may say you belong to maharashtra university we don't have any methodologies to uh, reform but at least internal assessment methodologies more and above the uh, Calculative norms, etc., you can definitely improvise. So, here there is a question 2.5.3. Here, yeah, look at the questions reforms in the process and procedure in conduct of exa evaluation and examination, including the automation of the examination system. So describe the reforms implemented in internal evaluation for examinations. Please remember this word internal evaluation slash examination. Whatever MHF does also is your part. Whatever you are doing for internal suspect, more and above the statutory norms also is your part. Examination procedures, integrating it to IT. That means, can you take online examination, multiple choice questions, and uh, contents in the suspense system as per the statutory norms and more about the statutory norms. Then, competency based assessment, that is OSHP and OSHI. Are you following the OSHP and OSHI? Objective based structured clinical examination and uh, objective based structured practical examinations. And can you uh, create uh, identification of workstations? for students so that there's objectivity in uh, assessing the competency okay. since the warning i'm telling you nowadays knowledge and skills are not that important but how you apply your knowledge and skills to develop competency is more important so competency based yeah. assessment if you are assessing your doctor so uh, the competency is diagnosis of a disease taking history from the patient diagnosis then treatment then prognosis then rehabilitation the oh, WHO ultimately aims at the promotion, prevention, control, curative, therapeutic, and rehabilitation. All these aspects should be known to a doctor. So, in what way is competent to promote the health wellness, prevent a disease, control a disease, treat a disease, rehabilitate a person after the uh, treatment? So, all these aspects one should know. Today, uh, if I ask a doctor of uh, Ayurveda that if there is an emergency, can you treat? He may say that I meant to see. The reason is, at present in Ayurveda, we don't have the concept of ICH. So, there's one thing missing. So, this is how Ayurveda can develop for future. Can you think of uh, intensive units in Ayurveda also in a bigger way as it is done in uh -huh. allopathy? So, these are some challenges Ayurveda is facing. So, for that, competency is very important. So, competence of a doctor to handle a case from mild to a major disease as well as to complications and management of complications, particularly at critical uh, level. The workplace workplace based assessment, in other words, not in the isolation, before the patient, along with the patient, by having all the materials, workplace based assessment. In other words, by his bedside, long case, short case case presentations, scenario based presentations. So how you ultimately you can assess a particular student. Then self-assessment. Are you allowing a student to go for self-assessment? Do you have any multiple choice questions? Where is on his own he can ultimately uh, answer it and ultimately uh, come out of it. So that's why online mechanism is automation is advocated. Then OSHP and OSHI. So these are the reforms. So more you adapt them, you better the marks for it. Lesser you adapt them, lesser the marks come. So my request to all of you is, at least for, from now onwards, you should think of going for examination reforms, particularly with special reference to internal evaluation, because external evaluation is ultimately the MHS. Definitely, they also go for these. They must have already gone for these. That's why that college level also you must be able to. Two point five point four is a quantitative matrix. Yeah, institution provides opportunity for students for mid-course improvement of performance through specific interventions. In other words, the, the statute says only two examinations. But sometimes a student may miss one test. Do you have any methodology to go for midterm correction? 
timely administration of continuous internal assessment. CIU means continuous internal assessment. Some of the institutions go for two, two or three tests, best of two can be taken. A surprise test. So, likewise, timely administration of uh, continuous internal assessment, on time assessment, and feedback. So, in certain colleges where I visited, when I asked a student, do you know the master of internal assessment? No, sir, I don't know. Then, how do you know? You are not informed. This is not a good practice. The good practice is you conduct the examination, you conduct the internal assessment today, based on a fixed date, then by the next another two, three days, correct it and share the answer book to students. Tell him what is right in it, what is wrong in it. It requires time, no doubt, that those students can improve. That's called mid course improvement. If you don't give the feedback to students, you have done wrong way, you have done right way. If the student doesn't know that, definitely there will be no learning. This is where the importance is uh, given to the yeah. mid course improvement. Okay. The make up assignments and tests. Can you give additional uh, assignments and tests for the correction? So, sometimes he has fallen sick, he has not attended a class. So, can you give such chances to him? Then, remedial teaching and support. Are you really having the remedial coaching? Many times the people say, Yes, I am having remedial teaching. But show me the timetable, no timetable. Show me the attendance, no attendance. Then how do you take it? The students come and ask me some clarifications and go. It's not remedial coaching. Remedial coaching is a specific official intervention. Please remember. It is a specific time-bound official intervention through a timetable, through a strategy. You have to identify the topics on which the student is weak. So all these aspects are important. Then if you follow all these, and you have the documents for all this, you get 10 out of 10 marks. Otherwise, you lose marks here. Next slide. 2.6.1. This is again a very challenging question. I only tell this much to you. In engineering colleges, this concept is there for the last 10 15 years. In other words, three terms are used. One term is called graduate attributes, it's a generic term. Any graduate, when once he gets a degree, what is expected of him? Like knowledge, skills, competency, leadership, cooperation, empathy, value addition, research development, so on and so forth. So around 8 to 10 attributes are there. Then depending upon the program, what is expected of a doctor? For example, what do you expect from a person having BAMS? These are the expectations. We call them as program outcome. Similarly, in the uh, Ayurveda, BAMS program, there is a subject, say Thai Chikitsa. What is the expectation of this particular course? You might be in a position to take the history, Pridosha concept, Nadish concept, something like that. So these are the competencies the student should develop. And these are the expectations from a student. We call them as course outcomes. So graduate attributes, program outcome, and course outcome. So all of them, look at it. We call them as learning outcomes. What, what do you expect after MD from a student? How do you, what do you expect after BAMS from a student? These are known as the attributes. So, the regulatory bodies also tell what are the competencies that you expect. So, you might list them, tell the students, and you should ensure that the students get it. And you must communicate them to students in advance. Suppose if I ask a student in your college, do you know this? He says, no, I don't know anything. That means you are not communicating to students. Through a handbook, through a website, through notification. Then only if you can write 100 words, 1500 words, with all documentation, you get 10 out of 10. Otherwise, you lose marks. This is a very easy question. But at the same time, marks are depending upon your results. Not 5 years university results. If it is more than 95%, you get full marks. Less than that, you keep on lessening the marks. If you get less than a particular percentage of results, you get zero marks. But it is not in our hands. Whatever the results are already there in the uh, university website for your college, that's fine. So final year, past percentage for the last five years, values here. If any college has got more than 95% results in, the, in that particular uh, last five years, you get 15 out of 15. But remaining ones, I do not know the benchmark, but I can say higher the percentage of 95 and above, you get full marks. Next. Look at it. Again, I told you, 
is POCO and the POCO is aligned with the pass percentage of a given particular course. For example, in uh, the BMS, there are 14 courses. The, you take out the marks for all the 14 courses. If all the students have got 100% marks or more than 80% marks in all the subjects, that means there is good alignment. Suppose in certain subjects there is 90% score, in certain subjects 60% score, in certain subjects 70% score. That means the students are falling short of the expectation in certain subjects. Because in a, when you put it in the form of a graph, you get a radar. So I request all of you to have a workshop with an engineering college uh, faculty regarding PO, CO, graduate attributes and alignment of the PO, CO with the learning outcome. So otherwise you will be losing marks here. So my request to all the college principals, please conduct one day or half a day workshop on POCO graduate attributes and its alignment with the learning outcome. You will definitely get 20 out of 20 from both the questions. Otherwise you will be losing marks. Next. Next slide. Next. Next. Yeah. So uh, parent teacher associations are a must in a college. But nowadays, no parents will come if the student is getting good marks. If they get bad marks or if they get less marks or if they fail, then the parents will come and hold the teacher responsible. To avoid this, you should have regular periodic parent-teacher meetings. Even if it's a blended mode or virtual mode, you should have. And every teacher should say, yes, I'm happy with my son's progress or daughter's progress. And you should ultimately list out the proceedings of the meeting and take actions on them. And what are the outcome of that action? You should always have a report. For each year, we should have one report. Minimum two meetings in a year you should have. And you should have the report. And each college teacher, year-wise, etc., they should prepare a report. And the report ultimately should speak of the improvement that has been brought about in that particular student. So here, mentor mentee system, parent teachers meeting, they should all should look get integrated and to lead to the better development of the uh, student from the point of knowledge and skills. So it is a qualitative matrix to get 10 marks. This is again, I told you, after the submission of the SSR online, you have to give the list of all the students registered in your college for first year, second year, third year, fourth year, both UG and PG, with their relevant email ID. Please remember some of the students don't give correct email ID. That will be uh, detrimental to you. So you have to ensure that the student gets a current relevant email ID. The NAC will select first 10% randomly and take the feedback. If the feedback is good, you get 3.5 and above. In majority of the colleges I have seen, they get 3 and above, provided they inform the students that they have to give the feedback on time. Many times students will not even see the website and portal. And if they don't answer within eight days, it, uh, it, uh, it becomes a null and void uh, uh, query. So you should educate your students in the beginning only that there is a, something called student satisfaction survey. You get 50 marks. Remember, you take the student to your confidence, you get 50 out of 50 marks here. That's what I would like wanted to share regarding criteria two. As I told you, in criteria 2, 180 weightage out of 280 is quantitative. The other jugar kill neka, some more in a year. Only 100 marks you can play jugar. So, one third you can play jugar, two thirds you can't play. It's already sealed in your college name. And this is the criteria which ultimately decides along with research whether you get A grade or not. So my request to all the principals and the coordinators is, please ensure that you prepare PAKKA document and documentary guidances. Then it is possible. But again, I, let me tell you, many of us do not know the difference between documentary evidence and that document. Your appointment order is a documentary evidence, it is not a document. When you make a list of teachers, one to hundred, department wise, designation wise, Putting the date, qualification, date of joining, etc., it becomes a document. So documents need to be created. They are not available ready-made. So if you follow these, I'm sure you will be succeeding. 
and I had certain cross talks during my uh, talk where they were asking as to how exactly you should go. The manual, which was approved in 2019, is in work with minor modifications from time to time. So whenever you want to go for assessment accreditation, please download the latest and the relevant manuals. Don't take the manual of 2019, which is given by your friends somewhere. Please don't that take the SSR from the friends who are going to share. Because if you have gone for assessment 2019, you'll be going for it now. You have to download the SSR on the day you want to decide to go for assessment accreditation. And keep for the minor modification because your submission is online. So these are my uh, tips for all of you. I wish you all the best. And if there are any questions, I will definitely take. Uh, uh. Over to the organizers. Thank you very much, sir, for your knowledgeful guidance. Whether there are any questions uh, from participants, be precise uh, and don't repeat Patil, the sir. questions. Patil, sir. Uh. Uh, my question is uh, regarding criteria 8.1.5. Dr. Thitmeser is uh, presently not available. If there is a question, you just uh, send me a message. I will call him. Okay, okay, sir. Hello, sir. Hmm? Yeah. Message Dr. Sunita Magar, YMT College. Okay. Hello, sir. I have Good. one question regarding 2.5.3. Uh, reforms in the process and procedure in the conduct of evaluation. Yeah. Where OSCE, OSPI, self-assessment, these kind of uh, reforms are included. So uh -huh. my question is, sir, as far as MUHS is concerned, there That's are no I, such I, I, I already told you. This is what about OSCE? Huh? If it is part of MUHS and you are central scheme, fine. If they are not over and above for internal assessment. We have to follow over and above. I'm using the word over and above. For example, for PG students, they say only two tests. You can have four tests. You can decide. You can have these methodologies. Okay. Sir, one question. You have a liberty to decide methodology. You have liberty, but you cannot say I've done it. You have to have an SOP. You have to get it approved. Okay. And you should but, that, the but, the, but sir, that doesn't reflect in the final bar sheet. Suppose no, no, see, or see, see here. By your documents that you are following these methodologies, you are proving that you are following it, not through marks. Yeah. Oh, okay, just documents. Documentation. For example, you have got automation, MCQ questions, short answers, so can you generation of that? question paper. Okay. And second question. Yeah. Okay, sir, I understood. Thank you. Sir, second question you told me that uh, uh, why, uh, we should conduct one day workshop. How to uh, this? One day, two, two days, two hours is enough. Two hours is enough from a given faculty on POCO graduate attributes and alignment. Uh, any any yeah. engineering uh, college faculty, because it's a ACT format, will be knowing it. So, POCO and its alignment with the uh, so, internal assessment outcome. To whom should I approach, sir, for this two hours workshop? This on Monday? So any, any, any college, uh, any, any pharmacy or okay. Uh, engineering college is a gone for MBA. You will be able to tell you. Okay, of course, sir. If you want, uh, I can suggest a few names. Uh, if you can uh, send me the details of your college, I can send names. Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. I have to ask one question, please. Ah. Uh, for the development of delivery of the e content and e courses, which training should be required? See, you should train your teachers as to what are the ICT tools, how to develop e content. How to upload them on web platform or e partial platform or your own LMS? How would you uh, use your LMS uh, that is a learning management system, advanced teaching plan, your PPT, your lecture notes, your uh, uh, drawings, assignments, etc.? Where the students also can put these assignments very correct. We call it learning management system. So you should train your teachers on LMS, learning management system, as well also what is smart board? What is interactive board? How to preserve and store? What is institutional repository? What is studio? What is lecture capturing system? All these things come when they are training. Sir, one question regarding mid course improvement exam. Uh, we are conducting the internal examinations every term. So uh, can those internal examinations be considered as 
improvement. See, whatever you already conducting the aspect statute in arms doesn't become a big force. There, there are statute in arms. More and above that, can you do something? Suppose a student has failed in first test. Okay. Between second test and third test, first and second test, have you conducted certain remedial coaching for him, another test for him, so that he can improve? And uh, for identification of slow learners and... Uh, you have to have an SOP. Suppose, uh, how do you say Jairaj is a slow learner? How do you say you are a fast learner? You have a methodology. Those uh, who don't interact in the classroom, they have scored very less marks in internal assessment and they don't conduct any practicals in a proper manner, what are you doing? You have to have a set of rules for it. Uh, thank you very much, sir. I think uh, as far as questions and uh, uh, queries are concerned, uh, we will now conclude this session. I am very much thankful to YM Jaira, sir, on behalf of MHS Nashik for uh, his uh, guidance. Definitely, the instructions, the, the, rather the suggestions which Jaira sir have given, all the institutions will follow and implement it in their institutes. Thank you very much, sir, for your guidance. Thank you. Thank you very much yeah. for the opportunity. Uh, Thanks to one now of we are, all the best. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Now we are at the last stage of this uh, one-day symposium. Feedback and Vote of thanks. I request Dr. Shikan Deshmukh, sir.